Good evening. I am Xavier Solomon, Deputy Director and Peter J. Sharp Chief Curator at the Frick Collection. Welcome to this episode of Cocktails with a Curator. This evening, we're going to be talking about this um, 18th century British picture in the Frick Collection. And I am pairing this with um, this cocktail, which is called a Great Maiden's Blush. And this is made of equal parts of gin, lemon juice, and elderflower cordial on the rocks, topped with pink, pink champagne. Cheers. The portrait I'm talking about today is, um, in fact, a perfect example of why art historical studies matter and how great discoveries still can be made in public collections like the Frick. Um, this is a work of art um, which has been drastically reevaluated over the past year. And this is the story of how that happened. So in April 1899, Henry Clay Frick bought this painting by the dealer Nudler. In his early collecting um, activities in the late 19th century, in the 1890s, Frick was particularly interested in female British portraits. And actually many other collectors at the time in the United States were particularly keen on these sort of portraits. It may come as a surprise to many that these sort of portraits were actually the most expensive works of art on the American market at that time. And that especially English dealers, European dealers, uh, were very keen to sell many of these portraits, which until that point were in English country houses to American collectors. And of course, the American collectors, all pretty much male, were particularly interested in the female portraits, not so much the male portraits. This is a painting that had been acquired by Nodler's partner, another dealer, Thomas Agnews, um, just slightly less than a year before, in July 1898. And on the 28th of July 1898, Agnews bought this portrait from Moore and Temple estate agents. And we don't really know much about these estate agents, who they were and uh, where they got the portrait from. But in any case, Agnew acquired the portrait and then through Nerdler sold it to Frick uh, later in the spring of 1899. The portrait was uh, acquired by Frick when Frick still lived in Pittsburgh. And here you see a photograph from around that time of the parlor at Clayton, the house that, uh, where the Frick family lived in Pittsburgh, where you see three British portraits that were all acquired between 1898 and 1899. Uh, on the right is the portrait by Romney of Mary Finch Hatton, uh, which is still at the Frick collection. And at the center, a portrait which Frick bought, believing to be uh, by uh, Reynolds, but in fact was then uh, demoted and, and sold, and it's now uh, in a different collection. And on the left, you see the portrait that he acquires from Nodler in 1899. This is the portrait of Mary Finch Hatton, which is in fact um, the painting by Romney, which is the first British female portrait that Frick acquires and remains at the Frick as the first in a long series of British portraits that uh, will make the collection of Frick particularly well known. And here again, you see the portrait that he buys from Nudler uh, in 1899 at the center, surrounded by, again, Mary Finch Hatton on the left and another portrait by Romney on the right in the library of the Frick collection. And here we are um, in the 19 teens, once the house on 170th Street was built. So the portrait that Frick acquires is attributed to John Hopner. John Hopner was uh, a British portraitist, uh, painter, born in 1758 in London um, from a family of originally German origins. And he will die in London in 1810, having spent all of his career in the capital of, of the United Kingdom. Hopner was a beloved society portraitist. He portrayed many of the great celebrities of the time, members of the royal family, uh, the great political figures of the time, and many of the aristocratic ladies of the age. Uh, just to give you a few examples, this is his portrait of uh, the Prince Regent, the future George IV, uh, the son of George III and Queen Charlotte, and this to this day is still in the royal collection. Hopner lived through uh, the difficult time of the sort of 
1790s, early 1800s, the moment of the Napoleonic Wars, which were changing Europe um, forever. And he portrays some of the great British heroes of the Napoleonic Wars. So this is his great portrait of Admiral Nelson. This still to this day in the Royal Collection, uh, the great full length portrait of the uh, victorious Admiral of the Battle of the Nile, the Battle of uh, Copenhagen and the Battle of Trafalgar. And also the young uh, Duke of Wellington. This of course is before the great victory at Waterloo. Uh, Hopner was never uh, to witness the end of the Napoleonic trajectory as he died five years before Waterloo. But he also portrayed some of the uh, great intellectual and artistic figures of the time. This is another painting that the Prince Regent loved very much and kept in his collection and is to this, to this day still in the Royal Collection, which is a portrait of the German composer Franz Josef Haydn. And this was never completed. You see it in its sort of very sketchy, rather beautiful um, uh, solution that Hopner reaches. And, and it was left this way and um, entered the Royal Collection. But Hopner was also famous for his portraits, group portraits of children. And so here you see the children of the Douglas family now at Waddesdon Manor, the, the home of the Rothschild family. So this is one of the grand uh, portraits of children that Hopner produces in the late 1790s and early 1800s. Uh, but he was well known also for portrait of his portraits of aristocratic ladies. And this is the second Hopner that Frick acquires all the way towards the end of his life in 1915. By the time he's, a, he's, he's building the house and moving into the house at 170th Street, this to this day still hangs where Frick had it over the mantelpiece in the dining room at the Frick. Um, presiding over a whole room of British portraiture. And this represents ladies Sarah and Catherine Bly, and it was painted around 1790. So when Frick acquires in 1899 the portrait by Hopner, um, Agnew and Nodler, um, who presumably had come up with this attribution, unless the attribution already came from the estate agents from Moran Temple, who sold the portrait um, to uh, to Agnew. Um, it also came with the identification of uh, a very specific person. And the, the sitter in the portrait is described at the time as the daughter of Admiral Bing. Subsequent studies in the catalogues of the Frick collection and, and all the studies on this painting identify this, this woman as Lucy Elizabeth Bing. Lucy Elizabeth Bing was born in 1794 and dies in 1875. And she is the daughter of Vice Admiral George Bing, who becomes the sixth Viscount Torrington. The main problem with this identification is the fact that Hopner died in 1810. And when Hopner died, Lucy Bing was 16 years old. So this is a problem that has been referred to in much of the literature around this portrait, and yet it has never really been solved. Uh, the sitter clearly looks older than a 16-year-old girl. And the other problem is that a portrait of Lucy Bing is not documented at any point in the career of Hopner. So this is a portrait that has remained more or less hidden um, upstairs at the Frick, this usually now hangs on the second floor at the Frick and is not among the works of art that are visible on the first floor. Um, and this remained uh, like this until very recently. And until uh, one of the Frick's curatorial assistants, Eloise Owen, started looking at this picture, uh, very much um, interested in it because uh, a private collector got in touch with her with a miniature of the same sitter, clearly based on this portrait. And as she was researching the portrait and the miniature, um, she, she came across a, a very important piece of evidence. The portrait had been engraved, but it had been engraved in the late 19th century when it was believed to be Hopner's portrait of Lucy Bing. And the, this print was probably commissioned around the time when Agnews uh, acquired the portrait. But Going back to the painting and the miniature uh, that Eloise um, was presented with, she managed to connect it to this drawing. And the miniature was attributed to um, Henry Bone. And Henry Bone is um, a British artist who, who made copies of famous paintings um, 
based, um, well, made in miniatures that were made um, as sort of replicas of celebrated works of art. And so uh, before making the miniatures, he would base um, uh, the, the, the work on a scaled drawing, a sort of squared uh, drawing made this way so that the, it could be exactly copied in a smaller version in miniature. And three albums of these drawings by Bone showing many celebrated works. For example, the, the album includes um, Holbein's Thomas More, which is also at the Frick, but it includes clearly the Frick portrait. But the inscription below it reads, Miss the Veem after Beachy for Captain Bailey, 1795. So different artist, different sitter, and suddenly a very different story came to light. And Eloise has just published this very important piece of research in the Burlington Magazine in April of this year. So this is brand new information, which actually allowed us to date the portrait, but also come up with a different attribution and a different identification of the sitter. So the portrait is, in fact, by Sir William Beechey and not by John Hopner. William Beechey was an exact contemporary of Hopner. He was born uh, five years earlier in 1753 in Oxfordshire, and he died almost 30 years later in 1839. He had a much longer career. He also started working for the royal family and ended his life as the official painter for King William IV, uh, who was George IV's uh, younger brother. Beechey was well known for his very irascible temper, uh, but also for the great generosity he showed towards young artists. He was a pupil of Zoffany, but he ends up supporting a, a large number of young artists, including John Constable. And when we look at Beechey's career, we realize that in style, he is very similar to Hopner, and he also ends up painting many of the same sitters that Hopner painted. And if you think of this period in the late 1790s, early 1800s in, in London, the three great painters of this generation are Hopner, Beechey, and Lawrence. And here is Beechey's portrait of the old Queen Charlotte, the Prince Regent's mother. This is now at the Courtauld Gallery in London. And so from very early on, Beechey um, paints works of art like this, grand works of art for the royal family. He paints the Prince Regent himself. And if you look at this portrait and think back to the Hopner, it is not that different. Clearly different pose, different outfit, but the two are working around the same sitters around the same time. This is one of uh, my favorite works by Beechey, and this is actually, again, a portrait of Admiral Nelson. But this is an unfinished sketch, clearly designed to be used on a much grander full-scale portrait, and this is now at the National Portrait Gallery in London. Beechey, like Hopner, became very famous for his portraits of children, group portraits of children. And again, these are very similar when you see them. Uh, this is the very large um, portrait of the Oddy children, which is now in the North Carolina Museum of Art in Raleigh, uh, which shows uh, brothers and sisters from this family. But also another celebrated work by Beechey uh, is this one, which shows Sir Francis Ford's children as now at Tate Britain in London. This is actually in many ways um, a very upsetting and strange picture, but very much of that age and very much showing uh, the double standards in a way of society at that time. So this shows a brother and sister who, um, from this, uh, this aristocratic family, who encounter in an imaginary wood in a garden, uh, a beggar boy who's actually a little bit older than them. And so this is this really terrible and, and um, harsh, in a way, encounter between children of very different social backgrounds. And of course, what Beach is doing with this picture, and many of his pictures and pictures of the time had this sort of um, very sort of moral undertone, is the fact that while the boy, the future head of the family, sort of looks somewhat down on the beggar, the girl is giving him a coin. And this is because, of course, uh, women's um, role in society, aristocratic women's role, one of their roles was um, charitable works. So um, a really strange work for us in the 21st century, uh, but very much a work that captures the, the beliefs and thoughts of the late 18th century in the United Kingdom and in many parts of Europe. 
So through the miniature of Henry Bone and through Eloise Owen's um, discovery, we now know that this is a portrait by Beachy and not by Hopner. If you've looked at the portraits that I showed you, you can see that in many instances, the style of the two painters is somewhat similar and there's been much confusion between the two uh, over the last few hundred years in terms of art history. But while the mythical portrait of John Hopner of Lucy Bing, as I mentioned earlier, is never documented and we don't know about it, this portrait, a portrait of Miss Devim, by Beachy is very well documented and until this year it was considered lost. So in 1795 Beachy shows uh, this portrait at the Royal Academy. It's documented and it is described and people mention it as, uh, as, as being a very beautiful portrait for its breadth of light, for the harmony of colouring and a number of, of other um, points. And Beachy and Hopner are often compared uh, usually favorably for Beachy at the Royal Academy when the show portraits in the same show. So uh, this is another case in 1795 where the Beachy's portrait is, is, is uh, lauded at the Royal Academy much more than any of Hopner's works that are exhibited at that point. And the woman is Elizabeth Sophia de Vim, who was born in 1775 and will die in 1804. Um, she was born in London and grew up in London, but her family, the Devim family, as the name suggests, were, was originally of French origins. There were Huguenots that escaped to, to Britain during the, the wars of um, the religious wars and um, escaped from France to a Protestant country, to, to the UK. Um, when she's portrayed in 1795, she's 20 years old. So uh, the age makes a lot more sense than the supposed portrait of Lucy Bing. And um, what we know about Miss Devim is actually very little. Um, she became an orphan. Her, her father died when she was 14 years old. And the Henry Bone miniature and the drawing mentions that it is made for Captain Bailey. And Captain Bailey was um, her mother's father, her maternal grandfather, who was Captain Thomas Bailey, who was the Lieutenant Governor of Greenwich Hospital. And it is likely that the grandfather took the place of her father, taking care of her and possibly commissioned this portrait uh, and the miniature to keep. And the portrait may have been made, we don't know, but it could be, uh, in view of a possible marriage. Um, so Elizabeth Sophia was uh, an only daughter. And so clearly her mother and maternal grandfather were very interested in her future. And so it is likely that the Beachy portrait may have been made in view of a future possible uh, wedding. Uh, she ended up marrying, in fact, uh, but a few years later in 1801, and she marries a first cousin, John Bailey. Uh, so uh, John is the son of her mother's brother. And uh, the two lived together, as far as we know, until her death only three years later in 1804. Um, we don't know uh, what she died of, but Elizabeth Sophia Devim Bailey dies in um, 1804, age 29, with no children. And so this is really the end of her story, as far as we know. So this is a portrait that um, enters a period of total obscurity because we don't really know what happens to it. Um, we assume that uh, John Bailey must have kept the portrait of his widow uh, after her death, but how it, um, how and where it was uh, between 1804 and 1898 for about 94 years, um, we don't really know. And during this period, the fact that the lady portrayed was not a particularly celebrated historical character, was someone who had died without having a family, so the memory of, of her identity was lost presumably very early on. And it then, for unknown reasons, reached this new attribution to John Hopner and this new identity as Lady Bing. And um, in fact, for the last hundred years and more, while it's been at the Frick Collection, this painting has always been catalogued and discussed as John Hopner's portrait of um, Lucy Bing. But we now know, um, thanks to Eloise Dowen's work, that this is actually the first and only work in the Frick Collection by William Beachy. And in fact, it, it shows Elizabeth um, so Sophia de Veem and we now know exactly who the sitter is. So the study of art history is something that still brings 
uh, new information as we, as we work on the collection at the Frick, but in any other museum. And that is part of the importance of research. Um, all of the stories that I've been uh, recounting over many evenings in Cocktails with a Curator are all based on the research done by generations of art historians uh, before me, by myself, by my colleagues, and museums should remain for the future as important research centers where the history of our works of art, of our past, is better understood uh, for us to know and understand it in a better way. I look forward to welcoming you all next week with another episode of Cocktails with a Curator. Good evening. <laughs>